this is what we're trying to end up with as kind of a final product. We've got a new concrete pedestal or base and uh, it's think of it like a almost like a sidewalk. It's going to float on a bed of gravel out in the uh, cemetery and basically uh, our form essentially that cavity form is what created this slot here. So then the mar monument will just slip through here. It's a pass through slot so if any water gets in there it'll drain right through to the aggregate uh, base below it. Welcome back. I'm Greg, a good cemeterian in uh, Minnesota. And uh, today we're going to form up another slotted base for a tablet style monument. Uh, it's almost the exact dimensions as it. Based on the size of this tablet, uh, we have about nine inches all the way around. It's a, a two inch thick by about 12 and a quarter inches wide. And so the form that I made up to, uh, to uh, create the cavity, uh, I've added one quarter inch on all dimensions. So we're uh, half an inch wider, half an inch longer than the actual measurements of the tab slot. I've got the base of the uh, monument, or excuse me, the, the base of the form uh, marked so I know where this position goes. Uh, where the cavity form goes and then uh, make sure that you've got a nice flat and square base so that it sits uh, basically perpendicular uh, to the to the floor of the form. Uh, later on as the concrete sets I'll essentially put in a couple of lag bolts to kind of act as handles so I can move this form wiggle it around and slowly pull it out. One thing that I've tried this time, I don't have it all screwed together, but I did wrap it all in packing tape so that if it does get a little too tight, uh, then I can just cut the tape, move, remove the inner uh, um, layer, and then hopefully that'll give me uh, enough room to get these boards out. And this is uh, just a, a five quarter inch decking board, two pieces of that, and then I've got a quarter of an inch uh, filler in between so I get exactly my two and a half inches thick that I want. So half inch thicker than, than the tablet is. Uh, I like to mix it about two bags at a time in the wheelbarrow. A little over two, two bags at a time just gets to be hard to mix. And, uh, but, so as you're pouring it in, just make sure that you remeasure this so it hasn't shifted. Okay, I've got two bags of uh, concrete mixed up. I've uh, Remeasured to make sure that this is centered and equidistant all the way around uh, the cavity form here. Basically, when I get it close, then I just pack it down with my uh, with my fist. Um, I'll also take a two by four and kind of tamp down some of the corners, make sure we don't have any cavities in there. I don't want to tamp this too smooth. I want the next uh, the next batch that I dump here to kind of kind of intermix to uh, to lock together. So let's mix up a couple more bags, throw it in, and uh, we'll keep working. I've got uh, just not quite four bags of concrete in here. And uh, one thing I want to note, uh, I'm not going to put the lag screws in, in this uh, cavity form yet, because uh, that way I can, uh, I can trowel or, or float right across uh, the edge of this. I'm going to use this to kind of cause the concrete to intermix again with that that first uh, two bags that I put in. So originally one time, one of the first times I did this, um, I put in the first uh, two bags, floated it all nice, smoothed it, put in uh, another layer or another two bags. Uh, I saw that basically it was like two layers of cake and kind of sliding on top of each other so they didn't really bond and interlock. So let's go ahead, uh, we'll tamp it in with, uh, now I'll do, pack it into the corners and uh, then we'll start floating it off with uh, more of a, a finished uh, layer. They were almost exactly four bags and uh, just a tip, uh, find a place to do this in the shade. Uh, but basically, I, right now, Kind of doing, packing it in. And now let's uh, kind of use this board to kind of saw it and level it off. And you'll see I'm just skimming over the top of that uh, cavity form. 
Yeah, we got a little low spot, so I'm just going to use my hand. Take the excess and I'll pack it in. So we'll kind of continue that process. Next, I'll probably move to the float. The finish we have now is actually almost as smooth as uh, some of my first attempts with a trowel, but so far I've only used a piece of uh, dimensional lumber, two by six, and also my, and also my float. So now we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and do a little trowel work and then start the edging. And what I have found is this edging works better when uh, I've got kind of a wet mixture. Took the edger on our first pass and uh, after that did a little more troweling work. Put some leg screws in my uh, cavity form and now you can see I'm able to wiggle it, uh, uh, create a little, uh, uh, oh, wiggle it around so there's a little space. And actually, I think wrapping it in uh, packing tape actually worked real well. It seems to slide uh, uh, a lot better and the water does not absorb as much into the wood of the cavity form and swell up. So now we just need a little more uh, finish work with the trowel and uh, I'll re-edge it. Did a final, hopefully a final troweling uh, edging around here. So basically we're damn near uh, done. Uh, the only thing that I might have to do is re trowel it again as I work and move this form out, but it's almost ready to uh, come out right now. I do like to leave it a little longer so as the uh, concrete sets, because if I, if I pull this out right now while it's still, let's say, fairly green and wet, I'm afraid that the nice sharp square edge might crumble and break away. So I'll, uh, I'll kind of... Uh, Keep playing with that uh, over the next hour or two and uh, eventually pull that out and we'll have our finished product. There you have it, that's my um, new slotted base for a tablet style monument, marble monument. So thanks for watching and do what you can in your uh, local cemeteries to help out.